Hi and welcome to this lesson. Here we're going to talk about how thiazide diuretics lead to hypercalcemia. Now before we begin, it's important to understand that thiazide diuretics are not the only cause of hypercalcemia. In fact, the more common causes include bone reabsorption and increased calcium absorption along the GI tract. Uh, so thiazide diuretics are considered as other, which are lesser common causes of hypercalcemia. Now, in addition to the causes of hypercalcemia, it's important to understand the clinical features. And here's a whole host of different clinical features. So we have anxiety, depression, and confusion, which are neurological or psychological effects, constipation, polyuria, nephrolithiasis, shortened QT interval, and muscle weakness. Now, it's important to understand that any individual clinical feature cannot be used by itself to diagnose, to make a diagnosis of hypercalcemia because they're not specific to hypercalcemia. So it's important to memorize the different causes as a constellation of clinical features or a cluster of clinical features. And for exams, what they might ask you is which additional uh, clinical feature might you see? So it would be a patient that's got hypertension, is taking thiazide diuretics, and now they have some hints of hypercalcemia or their serum calcium is elevated. And in this case, they might ask you which additional clinical features might you see. So that's why memorizing these more specific ones might be very helpful. And I would focus in on the polyuria, nephrolithiasis, and the shortened QT interval as your more common question or common answers. Let's turn our attention to how thiazide diuretics lead to hypercalcemia. It begins with the inhibition of the sodium chloride co-transporter located on the apical membrane of the cells in the distal convoluted tubule. So with the inhibition of this transporter, less sodium will be transported into the cell itself, which will then lead to an increase in the sodium electrochemical gradient. That in turn, will increase the activity of the sodium calcium exchanger, which is located on the basolateral membrane. And with that, you'll have an increased driving force for calcium to be reabsorbed across the apical membrane via the calcium channels, which are referred to as trip channels. And then that in turn will lead to an increase in calcium reabsorption along the distal convoluted tubule, which can lead to hypercalcemia. Again, I refer to that or I emphasize the can because it doesn't always lead to hypercalcemia. However, because it always leads to an increase in calcium reabsorption, it can be used to treat idiopathic hypercalciuria where you have high levels of calcium in the filtrate and then ultimately in the urine, which increase the risk for calcium stone formation. And then finally, with the increase in calcium reabsorption, that can be used to help treat osteoporosis to reclaim as much calcium that's lost in the urine during the filtration process. So let's take a look at how this actually happens with an image of a cell. So we see here an uh, image of a distal convoluted tubule. Um, we have the lumen, the apical membrane, and the basolateral membrane. Here we have the sodium chloride co-transporter, and we have the sodium potassium ATPase, the chloride uh, channel on the basolateral membrane. Here we have a calcium trip channel in the apical membrane, and the sodium calcium exchanger in the basolateral membrane. Now, under normal circumstances, as sodium is being transported into the cell and then out across the basolateral membrane, there's a concentration gradient that is established. Um, so we have a normal sodium concentration of 12 milliequivalents per liter on the inside of the cell and about 140 milliequivalents per liter on the outside of the cell, which creates this large sodium electrochemical gradient, which favors the entry of sodium into the cell. Now, in the presence of thiazide diuretics, which will inhibit the sodium chloride co-transporter, the intracellular sodium concentration will diminish, which in turn increases the sodium electrochemical gradient. Now, because the sodium chloride co-transporter is inhibited, most of that 
gradient will be used by the sodium calcium exchanger. So more sodium will enter via the sodium calcium exchanger and more calcium will be transported across the basolateral membrane. That in turn will create a larger gradient for calcium to enter the cell via the calcium trip channels located in the apical membrane. So this is how the inhibition of the sodium chloride co-transporter can lead to an increase in calcium reabsorption. So in, in summary, I've included all this complete concept map, a complete version of it, and then a blank version of it so you fill that out and memorize each one of these parts. Thanks and good luck.